Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to the future. On today's episode, we're going to be catching up with Robert Ranitsky. And if you don't know who he is, I implore you to watch this video first. We're talking about his, maybe his transition into building a passive income business model. I don't know, but let's give a warm Austrian German welcome to Robert. He's He's back, guys. He's back. <laughs> he's got a brand new logo. Damn. And let's catch up with him and what he's been up to. The 401, the lowdown. Robert, what's going on? Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> so happy to be back. Yes. Just, yeah. just saying that I'm, I'm really, really happy. And although it's a late night, I, I feel like in the late night tonight, it's 1040 now, like in the late night show, like almost going to bed soon. But uh, wow. I, I, try, I try to keep myself awake. So I put the kids to sleep. <laughs> And then drove back to the office. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, you look good. It, uh, if you Thank didn't you. tell me it was late at night, I would have assumed it's during the day because it's <laughs> well lit. Your studio lighting is on point right now. Yeah, it's two huge LED lights. Like, Beautiful. Really, really bright. Yeah. Are those Thank new you. additions or, or did you have those last time? I did have those last time. Yeah, I adjusted mm -hmm. them a little bit. Um, okay. I use them if I do uh, vlogs or... Uh, well, I actually don't do vlogs, but like reviews and, and tutorials and mm -hmm. anything that basically me being recorded just uh, making sure so actually they're daniel's slides so i need to have a shout out to him because he allows me to use them so oh, he helps me out stuff so he, he helps me out with lights okay well fantastic well let's just assume that a lot of people who are tuning in today right now don't know anything about you tell us a right. little bit about your background and then catch us up to date what's happened since the last episode where you were on with us all right well i mean i work as a creative uh director i would say mm -hmm. uh mostly working on motion design projects, doing motion graphics, After Effects, Cinema 4D stuff, video film, etc. cetera. Uh, mostly commercials, uh, some of it also um, feature films lately with opening titles and stuff like that. That's that's really what I'm, what my heart really beats for, um, mm -hmm. doing that because you can do the combination of design and film and animation and have like a mini mini movie for a movie itself. So. That's that's really what what is exciting, but it's it's really bad in in Germany in terms of, of business. Like no one wants to pay for opening titles. Mm -hmm. um, so since, I mean everything is is well. I mean I can't complain. The business is running well. I have I have the best colleagues and friends that I'm working with. Uh, great projects, well paid. All is good. But um, for the last couple of years, not especially after um, having our second child. So we have two childs, um, uh, Elias and Noah, and um, they. I mean, it's it's the most beautiful experience, but it's also the, the biggest change in your life. Um, I'm sure you can uh, agree yes, with that. Yes, yes, yes. I know all about that. And more and more, the question comes up: like, okay, so what's what's going to happen next? Um, you know, what's w what's in for for me for not tomorrow or maybe in the next half year, but maybe in five years or ten years? And that's a really tough question. And and ever since I was wondering about that more and more, um, I, tr I, tr I, I really thought about, okay, wh what is it I'm going to do? Like, do I going to open up a proper business like a studio with, I don't know, 10 or whatever, 15 employees? Mm -hmm. um, do I go to a company? Um, you know, companies like Apple and Adobe were interested in having me, but I was denied because I want to work as a creative, um, like on my own own stuff and, and not being told what to do really. Um, and right, that's one right. of the one of the things that, that I love enjoying, you know, being able to take on a few projects, um, but also say no to a few projects, because I think always saying no to something means saying yes to something else. So I learned that. So it's all good. But um, I was wondering, like, what can I do? And, and, I, and I, it's funny because like a year, actually one and a half years ago, I, I, I caught up on YouTube, believe it or not. <laughs> For me, like before YouTube was just like shitty cat videos and I don't know what, like I've, <laughs> I've, never, <laughs> I've never watched it um, being signed in, you know, like you don't, you don't get any special recommendations based on your interest. Right. So ever since doing that, all of a sudden I see those interesting After Effects tutorials and those camera reviews and uh, all those nice creative and design things. And um, so I stumbled upon Casey Neistat's um, vlog and, and, and realized like, well, he has some really interesting things. Then Pierre McKinnon with his fantastic vlog, um, teaching a lot of very basic things, but some of the things are really nice, even for pros. And I, I was kind of wondering, like all these, all these people are, are, are doing, doing the stuff we're living. Um, and then of course I saw, I saw your video on Facebook um, with uh, how, how you should not, um, 
how you said how you should not bill for time right. but for, for what it's worth and that's actually a very good point and um so this all made me think and realize that there's really more and digging into that and seeing like all your videos that you have and everything that's going on with for example melinda um is she called melinda yeah i think i wrote it down yeah yeah and uh, she's in a little bit of a similar position, I think. And, and this really triggered me into thinking like, hey, what, what can I do in terms of, of things to change? And how can I leverage my, my experience and knowledge and all the contacts that I have with all the industry um, uh, businesses that I'm, that I'm working for, like you know, Wacom and uh, Adobe and uh, BenQ and so on. So how, how can I use that experience to, you know, to help others as well as as earn some some money with that, and I know I realized in the last um, couple of couple of months that it's certainly not easy. Um, and 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 you said it many times in your in your videos that passive income business is not like okay easy money and you're done. Uh, I mean I knew that, and uh, but it's just it's just so interesting to like to to feel it really through and to realize that um, it's a lot of hard work that has to go into that. Mm -hmm. And are you embracing that path now to try to figure out how you can build a passive income business model? Yeah, totally. I mean, I've been I, honestly, I've been on a high uh, since since our last conversation. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Tell I mean, us I, more. I was, well, emotionally, I was to be honest, I was I was really I was really down like for the last year or so, like almost close to a burnout, like creatively, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. like, oh damn, I, I hate my job, and well, not really hate because I still love it, but I, it was just so frustrating. Um, a lot of projects repeating itself and, and uh, although I had some very exciting projects with opening titles and some conference titles and stuff like that, I was, I still kind of felt like, oh man, I, I don't know how, how I can go on in that, in that treadmill, uh, for, for any longer. And, um, because I, I, I developed that habit of forcing myself to having to work, you know, I'm, I'm very disciplined, but I, I, I stopped the, I stopped cherishing the benefits of being self-employed, you know, being able to say, you know what, today I'm not going to go to work or maybe I'm going to work late or at night or I'm going to work at the, at the coffee shop or at the restaurant or whatever. Um, I was like so much into, I have to work here from nine to whatever, five, mm -hmm. six. And um, it was frustrating. And it, the funny thing is after our conversation, I, I started to shift things around a little bit. I started it a little bit before as well, but like really focusing on, on changing a few things after the conversation, um, especially like doing doing stuff for myself. So I took a little break for commercial projects for about six weeks, seven weeks. Um, only a few minor things were going down. And um, so what I was uh, picking up on was like creating a new logo, creating a new website, um, you know, working on on me as a brand, on working on, working on the Robert brand. Uh, I don't know if that sounds silly, but... Um, basically doing stuff that no one tells you how to do just me. And sometimes you can be your worst client. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it so much because, you know, I was like scribbling here, I was scribbling there and I was spending the afternoon with the kids because I just didn't want to work. Mm -hmm. And still I got a lot done. Um, that also meant having to work in unusual hours, like 10 years ago, maybe at night instead of watching Netflix. I remember our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, you cannot get more more hours in a day, right. um, but you have to shift your time. And I still do Netflix. I uh, still love it. And um, but but I, I certainly changed a few things. You know, I watched uh, a lot of videos, uh, like the one from 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 you, Dustin Lee, uh, the ones with Melinda, a lot of Matthews videos. Uh, Mark has a great one about micro micro videos. Mm -hmm. Micro content. Um, and, uh, and a lot of your logo critique, um, uh, I watched that as well. And of course, uh, I watched um, two, uh, two of your courses, which I really enjoyed. So everything was like, like, a, like a pressure intake of, of, of knowledge, <laughs> like, uh, you know, like the matrix, when you, when you get that thing into your neck and then all of a sudden you can, you can do jujitsu or something, you know, I can't right. do jujitsu. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, it's been, it's been very exciting and it's been, not just ups, but also downs. Uh, I mean, since since our last conversation, my my Instagram like more than doubled, which is fantastic. But it's good kind job. Of, it's it's kind of like um, you know, I, I was at two hundred fifty or three hundred. I'm mean, right. still ridiculously low. Right. Uh, don't laugh at me. 
um, <laughs> but but it, it was it was pretty much skyrocketing mm -hmm. to like 500, and now it's like at 600, and it always goes up to 670, 650, and like why? Like people follow and unfollow again, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like I can't really figure it out. So yeah. I, I try to step up my Instagram game. We can talk about it later, I guess. Okay. Um, I'll make a note. Same mm -hmm. same with same with with YouTube. Um, I really worked hard on my channel, like really figuring out okay what did i miss the last few years like i didn't have like an end card with subscribe to or watch this video so i learned all that created a new intro specifically for my for example review or tutorial videos um yeah a new logo is up um and a new website is up as well so i launched that uh today actually okay the premiere yeah premiere um, <laughs> But um, this is this is all the ups, but the downs is like after you realize like okay wow um, it's it's not it's not taking off as fast. So I know I have to be patient, and this is not something I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Let's say for this year, maybe not even for for next year. I'm gonna continue working as a normal creative, yeah. but slowly transitioning in and, and building. So right now I feel more like building a a, a base, like a groundwork. Uh, um, for for whatever is coming coming next, so gathering people that are interested in in what I do and how I can help them. So this is this is what's been happening, but also realizing that um, it takes time and it takes a lot of hard work, no matter what it is. It's not necessarily a new realization, but it's certainly something that's kind of like it, it, it can hurt sometimes. Going like, okay, wow, this this was not expected, or uh, this seemed easier, and and it was lucky because a lot of commercial projects have been pushed back to later in the year. So I had enough time to finish all these things and work on these things. But it's going to be interesting when uh, when a hefty project comes around again. So yes, yes, yes. So there's a lot for us to talk about. I also want to make sure I introduce the person in the booth in the box with me. Also, Matthew and Cena, in case you're hearing his voice, Matthew, we, we were both we both met you or talked to you at Adobe Max and so, so Matthew's reading the comments and he's also part, he wants to be part of this conversation too. So this is really mm -hmm. us just catching up, kind of figuring out what's going on and trying to understand what your challenges are and seeing if we can help you take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now cool. we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have a special guest by voice appearance only later and we'll figure out when to introduce this other guest, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you uh, cue that person up later. Okay. Now I'm just sure. giving you a heads up on that. Okay. Let's talk a bunch of things. The first thing that we want to talk about is. You've made the decision, which is the biggest thing that you could do. You've made the decision and you've taken action. You created a new logo, you have revamped your website, and you're making a concerted effort to produce content for YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. those are all very good things. And so now we, we I think we have hardly kind of just wished that now it's going to happen. Now that I've made some effort, people are going to come in, people are going to love me, and the, the subscribers are going to skyrocket and soar the views. And <laughs> that's not the case at all. So what we yeah. want to what we want to remember is we're not doing this for a quick fix, make a buck, and we're out. We're not building it to sell it. We're not building it to flip it. It's a long game. It's a game of building out your personal brand and creating value and building an audience. Is really what we want to do, right? Right, right. I was reading the book Rework by Jason Fried, and I forget the other gentleman's name, but they're the two founders of of uh, what is it, Thirty Seven Signals, Basecamp people, and he said in there. All companies have customers. Some of the lucky ones have fans. And the really amazing companies have an audience. And the difference between an audience and a customer is this, is you have to pay a customer to pay attention to you, whereas an audience seeks you out. So that means mm -hmm. their loyalty in, in this kind of exchange for value, I give you value, they give you loyalty and attention is what they give you. And that's very, very valuable. I got into a little bit of a Twitter war because people don't understand like, oh, so I wanna buy some future courses with my loyalty points. Mm -hmm. They're trying to be really smart about it and that's okay, they don't they don't get it. The, the message is just going right past them because like, no, in my world, it doesn't work. You do work, you get paid. But what you're doing right now, Robert, by producing high quality content and teaching people, inspiring them and informing them is you're gaining their loyalty and for which at a certain point in your life and career, you will be able to exchange for money and it will happen. It will happen because I know you produce some really great tutorials and you go out on the lecture circuit. Now it's time to do it for your channel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just do I mean, the, it. The, the, sorry to interrupt. The, the one thing I, I need to say though is um, like since since last conversation, I had like so many messages, uh, encouraging messages, comments on YouTube. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to point out four uh, four guys. Um, that's Alex. Oh, wow, perfect. Okay. Alex, Merdad, Miles, and Victor. Um, those those four really reached out uh, and offered help um, in one way or the other. Like, offered really to help like, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, oh, wow. They don't know me. And, okay. and I don't know them. Like, one is from, from the US, the other is from Germany. And um, funny thing is, uh, one guy, Alex, he even, he's, a, he's a young student. He even um, emailed or, or called me. I'm, I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> saying like, hey, can I can I visit your studio? You know, I just you know I just want to see how you work, and uh, don't mind if, if you say no. But uh, yeah, so I said, of course, come by. So we had a coffee. He liked it, and um, oh wow, I had the feeling it really helped him, and it was really. I mean, I didn't gain anything from that, and I didn't want anything for that, but it was it was a beautiful um, thing to do because that was exactly how I did it, like you know, fifteen twenty years ago, and and that gave me this kind of like this 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 karma feeling, like okay things happen for a reason and yeah. I try to help someone and you know this person could be in, in my shoes in 10 years 15 years and remember that so um that's that's a that's a big thing I, I wanted to say that um the 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 responses and the comments that I received were like truly overwhelming and it showed me that there's more good and, and love in out there than than trolls and hate and, and dislikes and whatever <laughs> and are you getting are you getting a little emotional right now yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> This is it. Well, you know, I mean, you're soft spoken German. <laughs> to get to get back to um, to to the tutorial thing, I, yeah. I, I use this one here. I, I kept that. Um, uh-huh. Matthew, you should, you should know what that is. Oh yeah, that's that's his. Um, his well, don't tease us. What the heck is it? <laughs> Come on, I can't see. Oh it. yeah, basically the last time when Robert came on, mm-hmm. and I, we've been talking a lot about passive income and how to create content, how to create products. So. While you guys were interviewing, I was building this deck of all the information that you and I have been talking about, Chris, oh, in right, the right. office. Yes. And I made that as a downloadable PDF, and mm-hmm. I pushed that out uh, specifically for Robert, but also for the audience. So I also added that same link in the description below if you guys want to download it. It should be helpful for you guys who are considering uh, making either content or some kind of knowledge product, but you guys don't know where to begin. Yeah. And this is something that was very helpful for me. I remember when Chris had first invited me onto the channel to start producing content for the future, maybe three or four years ago. And he said, hey, I want you to make a video for the channel. And I said, what do you want me to talk about? Because I'm not you. I'm not Christo. I got nothing to teach. Nobody's going to find mm-hmm. what I have to say as special at all. And over the years, obviously, that was not true. Chris, you told me, you know what, just flip the lens uh, back onto yourself and realize that you've spent time and money to get to the position where you're at right now. And that's valuable to somebody because you've already invested that time. Now take that and teach that to other people. So that's Mm -hmm. what, uh, you know, I've been trying to do with other people and that document that you had just filled out and and showed everyone, that's what I put in that PDF just to help some of you guys get started and and flip the lens onto yourself and realize that what you do is very special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to take a moment right now, just take a little bit of a moment to to appreciate and to acknowledge what Matthew is doing because we have a whole team. There's a lot of people involved in the future now. I think we're 10 people, maybe we're 11 people, I lose count. But the fact that he listened in and participated as part of this original conversation between you and I, Robert, and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to take action right now. I'm going to go do something about it. I don't want to just be inspired by stuff. I want to make stuff. I want to help people. So just by collecting and organizing in a way that he did and put it into visual format, he's making it a lot lot easier for people who didn't watch the entire show to be able to condense that piece of information down to a tiny little PDF. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's just the power of what the transformation that's happening here at the office. And so hats off to you, Matthew. I mean, hats off. I'm not literally going to take my hat off, but <laughs> hats off to you for doing that and then helping people. And I can see uh, somebody on online saying, Tony Alves is saying, man, people are awesome. This dude is one of them. I think he's talking about you, Robert, but I also think he's talking about Matthew, right? <laughs> and that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm sure he means Matthew. I mean, the Matthew deserves credit for that. Um, I mean, the interesting thing about, about this document is it's, it's not too long and it, it really helps you to put things down because uh, I've read somewhere that if you write things down, you learn and you, you, um, you consume things differently if you write down your thoughts, right? So when I was, uh, when I was writing down um, these things, I realized that um, like the, the, the fastest thing I can do is obviously I, if you want to record a tutorial for something, then you have to have a concept, you have to do screen recordings, edit everything, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I, rem- I remember that I have like so many talks that have been recorded that I did, for example, for Maxon. And um, so uh, I knew I talked a lot about specifics, like how can you do this in cinema and this in After Effects and so on. And 
And I figured it should be nice to like, I mean, those talks are usually between 45 and 60 minutes, so it's pretty long. Yeah. And I know that people like to have smaller, um, smaller videos, like three, five, 10 minutes maybe. Mm -hmm. So I, I reached out to Maxton and asked if they allow me to, to recut those videos into smaller chunks and of course link back to them, credit them, say thank you that they allow me to use that. Actually, it's me speaking, but still I, they, they recorded it. So they said yes. And, um, and that's, I have, I have the first video out. I'm going to do a few more and this are like mini chunks of learning how to do like, uh, camera matching and, and these kind of things. Um, and this is like, this was like the, the, the lowest effort, probably a low impact. I have it at low impact because, um, obviously it's, you know, I send it out for free. I'm not going to earn anything by that other than views and likes maybe and comments, but mm -hmm. certainly it helps other people. So that's the thing. Yeah. So, okay. Let's take a look at your channel. Okay. I want to jump into your channel because I can see a couple things already. So what I noticed, I, and I'm just on your channel right now. So you guys go check it out is Robert Ranitsky. The H is silent and he's got under just about under a thousand subs. And let's see if we can't help to get him above a thousand. Let's, let's start marching towards 10,000. But I noticed a video you just uploaded nine hours ago. It's not getting a ton of views. And the reason mm. why I suspect it is a couple things. One is nobody is organically searching for Sapphire Idents. Right. Like zero people. Like eight views might have come from you and from me right now just clicking on it. So what we got to do is we got to work on our titling. And that's very important. If you want your videos to be viewed, you need to do that. The one that's gotten a lot of views that we posted four weeks ago is for Wacom Cintiq 16 and Stand mm -hmm. Review. I believe mm -hmm. a lot of people are looking for that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the one next to it is getting quite a few views. It can do better because I think we, we want to work on this titling a little bit more. I think where this is where some of you guys who know too much, it's a, it's a bad thing. It's better if you know a little less. So you need to title your video, something that somebody might type in. So I'm not going to type in Maxon Cinema 4D. I'm just going to type in C4D camera matching or something, how to. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to think like that. What is somebody else going to type to find you and give that to them? And it's really important. You have to make your videos at this stage in the game, very discoverable and to be, recommended by the YouTube algorithm, okay? So if you make but some hey, of those changes, yeah. I think it'll do better. Hang on a sec. I mean, that's a very, very good point. I, I actually realized that the titles are very important, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, with being click, without being too clickbaitish or something. But I realized uh, while learning all this and, and, and watching others that the title is, is, is very important. So mm -hmm. uh, I kind of know this, I must say. But I always thought that the... The title is more like on the psychological side of things like okay so it it you know triggers interest personally not from the algorithm because i always thought that the the the, the, the hashtags and the keywords and everything that the tags that you put in are for the algorithm is the title also relevant for the algorithm it's a very good question i don't want to speak out of uh, my level of expertise here but i believe what youtube is doing is they're phasing out keywords they are introducing hashtags, but it's still fairly new, so we're caught in between. So the only thing I know left, are there's two things that you do, the title and the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Those are the mm -hmm. two probably biggest drivers in getting traffic to your channel, period. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard you say something like, let's not get to a clickbaity. Now to me, a clickbait is a sensational title that does not deliver. Mm -hmm. So it's like hot naked girls and you click on it and it's like, well, I, uh, I see now, now I hate you because you didn't deliver on the promise, but you have to design the title in such a way that it borders clickbait, but you deliver on the promise. And there's a fine right. line. And for some people, there's a lot of gray and some people it's black and white. And for me, there's a lot of gray in there because we have to figure out a way to give you this information I think is going to help you solve a problem, change your life to inspire you but in order for me to do that i got to get you to look at it and i know that the world is a really noisy place there's a lot of things competing for your attention so if i mm -hmm. if i come up with a really bland title something that some pe somebody's not looking for i can't help you then mm -hmm. and let me take that analogy further okay i say this to a lot of creators that i'm coaching i say that i believe i am probably one of the best resources for my clients to hire but they have to be smart enough to recognize that and pay me so that I can help them. Otherwise, I cannot help them. And I don't want yeah. to deny them of that help. So they got to learn how to pay me. So the same thing is you can help the world. Like you can help people understand how to do Cinema 4D camera matching only if they can find your video. So you got to figure out how to get them there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, that's one point. thing. Yeah. So I want to see your views go up 
a lot because it seems like all the tech stuff that you do seems to get a lot of reviews, right? Mm -hmm. So how can we get some of this other stuff? So when you're producing your tutorials, I want to see them get similar numbers. And that's when I feel like you figured out how to speak to your audience. And that's really important. Okay. So, yep, we'll do. The, the reason why there's like, for example, the Sapphire Idents project mm -hmm. is there because uh, uh, I actually wanted to include that on my website. Yep. And I only hit it on Vimeo. Oh, and, I see. Uh, if you remember, we talked about mm -hmm. uh, that YouTube Vimeo yep. topic in Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, with Nick. And you know, for me, it was like always, almost Vimeo. And right. Like I said, I was catching up with YouTube so late, so that's why I uploaded some of the older projects. I see. Um, to YouTube, and I, ne I need to reorder them. I think you can reorder it on your page, so it doesn't look like it's a new video. So technically, it's an old video. But I, I don't think you can. Not on YouTube. I'm Not on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, there's fewer tools. Here's what you want to do. If the Sapphire Ident is really for your website and to get commercial work, what I would mm -hmm. do for now is make mm -hmm. it unlisted so that you can mm -hmm. link to it, but you can't find it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would do because right now when I tune into your channel, I want to learn, I want to grow. And so your mm -hmm. channel has to be highly curated. Imagine if you tuned into the golf channel and they started mm -hmm. showing you how to cook. And mm -hmm. then you would be gone in a second. The same <laughs> vice versa. If it's a cooking channel, show me cooking culture and foodie culture. Don't show me other right. things. So I, I, right. I would rather have you have two or three videos that are exactly the, the channel that you want to create, that, is, that you aspire to create. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be a mix of technology stuff, mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. how-to tutorials. I think that's your niche. Mm -hmm. If you do that, when somebody looks at this and they watch one video and they see like, ooh, there's two or three more. I kind of like where this guy is going. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to sub. Point. Okay. That's now, Matthew point. only has three videos. Three videos on your channel? Mm -hmm. He has three videos. How many subs do you have right now, Matthew? I don't know. Maybe like 15,000. <laughs> look at the way he said that. It's like, what? You know, 15,000. He only has three videos. Now, one of those <laughs> videos has over 640,000 views, but hey, that's another story. Right. And he's doing everything right. He's taken everything we've been experimenting with some of the new things that we're learning and he put it all into this. So if you want to know how to jack your YouTube videos through the roof, I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matthew and Cena. <laughs> I don't know why I gave him the list voice. I have no idea. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Okay, Matthew, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think with everything that Chris is saying, title is important. But there's a lot of things that uh, influence how YouTube promotes your video and getting that into uh, in front of other people, right? So the title has to do with it. Uh, things that you have to look into are search volume and search competition. So there's tools for that. Uh, TubeBuddy is one of them. VidIQ is another. Those are third-party plugins that you can uh, install on your Chrome or into YouTube. And you could see the uh, analytics here. So if I type in a search phrase, for instance, how to design a logo, it's going to give me a score based off of how much search volume. So if it's in the tens of millions, it's very good. If it's in the you know tens of thousands, it's very bad. The other metric or the other measurement it will give you is competition. So if there's hundreds of thousands of videos on that, that means there's high competition and your video is going to get buried. Uh, if there's very little competition, that means you have a much better uh, chance of standing out. So those two things are very important when you are developing uh, your uh, content. So for instance, if you're looking for content to make, what you might do if you have some ideas, I would test it out before you even make a single thing. Before you even make the outline or anything, if you just have a rough idea, start typing in the search phrase that you would look for to find your own video. And what you'll see is whatever the top search results are, if it's uh, if you get tons of search results, that means there's a high volume of search there and there's a lot of competition. But you might also see that of the top videos that pop up, if they're only in the thousands, that means that it's probably very uh, low search volume and people aren't actually looking for that. But if you see that the top results for the search phrase that you had put in, uh, each of the video, the top performers are up there in, are in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions, then that means you have some of the right keywords in your titles, mm -hmm. right? So that's just a way to test that. Uh, I know uh, for me in particular, I made one video that uh, uh, Chris is referring to, and I just titled it DIY uh, Workspace Desk Tour. Because I know mm -hmm. that all three of those search phrases are high volume, they're trending very high right now, and um, there is not relatively not that much competition for them. 
So I made a piece of content around that, and that's why I think that thing took off. Because um, it's just highly searched right now. There's not that much competition, and it's riding on a lot of uh, different trends uh, in the internet right now or in culture. And those two trends are minimalism and uh, Marie Kondo, Marie mm-hmm. Kondo um, tidying up. So those things are uh, all pushing my video to the top because it's touching on a lot of these points. You know, I'm I'm putting a lot of these rods out, and I'm just waiting for the lightning to strike. So that's one way within the platform of YouTube that you could maximize um, how your video gains traction. The other things you might consider doing, because what YouTube does, it doesn't look at just the titles or just your content. Um, it also looks at your description. So because YouTube is the second, uh, the, the second biggest search engine in the world right after Google, uh, it scrubs everything uh, and reads everything that you put in there. So if you have a very lengthy description, uh, you're and you have some very strong keywords in there, just like your title, and you bury that into your description, that also has a chance of pushing your content up. That's probably why your Wacom video has so many views, is because you probably put some description in there, you put the title of the product in there, and people are searching for those things. So mm-hmm. uh, YouTube and Google are promoting those things up. Mm-hmm. So those are all SEO things. Those are all search-based things, and those are all um, looking at Google Trends and YouTube Trends. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. So there, there's some technical stuff, and I think you have to treat every single platform that you're on very differently. So the way we treat YouTube is very different than we treat Facebook, than we treat Twitter, that we treat Instagram. We don't just mm-hmm. um, blast all the same content on all of those channels. We've uh, modify each of the outputs. Uh, to suit the audience and what they're looking for there, mm-hmm. right? So, like, attention spans are different or their viewing habits are very different, right? For if for Facebook or Instagram, you're swiping, so you need to catch somebody within the first one and a half seconds or they're going to swipe by your thing. Versus mm-hmm. YouTube, YouTube people are sitting down and they're looking at a more passive way where they're just sitting there and as soon as they find what they're looking for, they will sit and watch for as long as you can hold their attention. Mm-hmm. So it's different user habits, right? So you're looking at the the user and and how they might uh, be using the platform and how they might look at your content. The last thing that you might do is look into um, YouTube advertising. So this is something that we just started experimenting with recently on the channel where we are pushing some of our content, like any of our content that already has good organic reach, Uh, we are putting a little bit of money behind some of those videos because we know that organically people already like the content. We just need more eyeballs to see it. So what we're doing through the uh, YouTube uh, AdSense platform is that we're looking at different channels that are similar to ours, uh, different design channels, different business channels, and we're building audiences based off of those channels, and we are targeting specific videos and specific channels. Um, so that when you are, if you're looking in YouTube on the right side or in the, below it, you will see related videos, mm-hmm. right? So if you pay for that, you can actually get a spot there uh, as a Discover ad. As a Discover oh, okay. ad, see if you see on the right side, it says ad there with the yellow. Like that right. thing is getting pushed up there. So you can put a Discover ad uh, on uh, other people's videos and the reason why you might do this is obviously to get views to your video but more importantly what I've learned about the YouTube platform is it looks at uh, how users travel from video to video and uh, starts generating relationships between those videos so for instance if we have a logo design video here and there's a, com- a different creator who has a logo design video over here um, and Nobody, if somebody watches our video and then watches their video, all of a sudden YouTube is creating a relationship between those two videos. The more Mm -hmm. and more uh, traffic goes back and forth between those two videos, it starts to develop a relationship and it will start suggesting that. So there are ways that for us, we've been trying to maximize that, put a little bit of money there so we are developing the relationships between our channel, other channel, uh, or our channel and popular content. So can I you define can you define yeah. a little money? Uh, a little money? Like uh thirty dollars. Thirty dollars per video. Yeah, yeah. thirty to fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, like not not a lot of money. And and the um the reason why we are putting that money in there is because we found audiences that are cheap traffic. So if you target something, if you build an audience that's very broad, like if you just put in business, there's gonna be hundreds of millions of videos and that's gonna be very expensive for your stuff to get pushed up. 
But if you look mm-hmm. at something very niche, like Cinema 4D tutorials, I know mm-hmm. there's only a handful of people who are doing that. So you'll be able to actually buy some very cheap traffic to your videos if you can build your audiences off of Grayscale Gorilla, off of iDesign, off of any, uh, mm-hmm. you know, School of Motion, any of these guys who are putting out really great uh, C4D mm-hmm. tutorials, you can piggyback off of that stuff if you target their videos, target their channels, and put uh, some discovery-based ads um, behind it. And then people will come to your channel, and then YouTube, after you even turn off um, spending money, will start saying, you know what, people who watched iDesign also watch Robert's channel. People who watch Grayscale Gorilla also watch uh, Robert's channel. So it's going to start suggesting for you. Right. So, okay. That's, that's a very interesting point. Um, and it kind of makes, makes me realize that, for example, um, for, the, for that specific, let's, let's stay on that example of the Wacom Cintiq review that I did. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I had that before, um, before the launch. So I did the review. So everything was done when, when the launch date came. So mm-hmm. I launched it. Obviously, there's other reviewers that have mm-hmm. thousands of followers, mm-hmm. and they they instantly had like I don't know how many thousands of views on their review, and I had like I don't know 200 in the first couple of days, mm-hmm. and and then it picked up, and and now it makes sense because probably those people who watch the video with the thousands of followers and views mm-hmm. um, had my video being recommended, so this Correct. is the relationship thing that maybe maybe happened, yes. Um, and now that I realize that, of, of course, it makes sense that you know the views, the view numbers are going up because of the relationship. Right, and it's a search. Point, yeah. I was gonna say it's a search trend right now. So, or when you released it, you said you got an early version of the product. Mm-hmm. So that means you are one of the first videos that have come out for that product. So mm-hmm. I don't know about your trends, but for me, before I buy something expensive for myself, I like to research it first, either through Amazon mm-hmm. or through YouTube uh, reviews. I like to look at camera gear uh, on YouTube right. and get a review. So people are already searching for the phrase, whatever the Lakus Wacom product is, because they want to research it before they buy it. So that's right. why they're already looking for that video. And that's why that has 14,000 views versus, you know, the few hundreds for the other videos. Mm-hmm. So it's a search uh, trend and people are looking for that. Okay. That's a very, very, very good point, Matthew. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Robert, we went down a deep, dark YouTube rabbit hole here. People are saying <laughs> Matthew's dropping fire. He got a little bit heavy. That was a lot of really good information. I'm sure we can we can do a little micro cut from this. See? How that yeah, works. Ah, there you go. All right, boom. That's one piece. Jonah. <laughs> but you know, really what I wanted to talk to you about, Robert, also was like, how can we help you? What kind of questions can we help you in your quest in starting to develop a passive income business model? Uh, where's my list? Let me All right, let's do it. Let's get to the list. Well, like one of the one of the thing was um, like ov- obviously the it, it's kind of the same thing with the Instagram game. Um, like same with YouTube. I, I came on board super late with Instagram. Like really denied it. I had I have been I don't know. I had an account for a couple of years, but never used it uh, ever since maybe last six months or something. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm still figuring out the Instagram game a little bit. So I clearly understand that that is different to what YouTube is doing. Yes. Um, so, so very, very different, in fact. Um, the other thing is um, the, the, this kind of feeling of not having enough of an audience. Um, so this also goes into, into this whole YouTube, Instagram game, creating followers, creating an audience, creating people that are interested in potentially looking at your stuff or maybe even later buying your stuff to have an extended course about this or about that. I mean, I do have a few ideas on, on what I could do as, as a knowledge based product. Um, but this is like further ahead. I mean, uh, do you want to hear some of the ideas that I have? Sure. So, um, again, this is based on my, uh, on the, on the list from Matthew <laughs> so that I filled out. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of design-related stuff with with tapping into motion graphics. So it's it's heavy on the on the After Effects side and and Cinema 4D side. So I can imagine doing something with After Effects. And obviously, Andrew has has a great resource. I mean, his tutorials are, are kick ass. But I was thinking maybe more towards starters. Like I always when I always demo and and talk about After Effects um, to people that don't know After Effects. I always explain like this is like Photoshop with 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 a timeline, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I thought, and I know that a lot of people 
that know and use Photoshop want to learn After Effects to animate since since they see they have it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe that could be uh, like a little niche um, to make basic After Effects tutorials for people that know Photoshop quite well. Mm -hmm. So this could be something um, either free or paid. I don't know. Um, the other one is uh, is is presenting um, how to how to give talks keynotes. Um, what I do, what I have learned in over. How many years of presenting? 13 years of presenting now um, in front of maximum of uh, 1,500 people, I think. Um, what, what can you do? What, what tools do I use? How to prepare? How to, how to breathe? How to look? Uh, <laughs> how to behave on stage? Stuff like that. This could be, this could be like an like a interesting masterclass, I think. Um, these are just ideas. I mean, I don't have like an outline yet or something, but these are things that could be done. But then again, I need to have a comfortable and, and confident feeling of knowing that, oh, people would be interested in, in seeing that and potentially buying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to, I want to weigh in on this. I, I want you to focus on building your audience first and kind of figuring out what style of communication works and connects and mm -hmm. resonates with your community. There's an article here from Kevin Kelly, and he writes about why we only need 1,000 true fans 1,000 true fans, and his article or essay was included in Tim Ferriss's new book, Tools of Titan. And, and oftentimes you think, I need to have hundreds of thousands or a million subscribers, you know? He says clearly here, you don't need millions. Mm -hmm. What you need is you need 1,000 true fans. And the definition of a true fan, according to Kevin, is this, is that they're willing to buy anything that you put out. So if you have 1,000 true fans that are willing to buy one product from you for $100 a year, you will have created yourself a nice lifestyle business and you will have made $100,000. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on that, okay? Because now when you think about it like that, a $100 product, there's a lot of things that you can make, Robert, and everybody that's watching this right now, this is how you guys are gonna make $100,000 a year. This is how you're going to do it. <laughs> this is the blueprint. So you definitely want to read this article. It's by Kevin Kelly, and it's kk.org, and it's 1,000 true fans. And just check it out. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of little things that you can make, Robert. Now, first, let's build our audience. Let's try to figure out how to build our true fans. Right now, you have 993, but they're not necessarily true fans. They've subbed to your channel. So mm -hmm. if we if we need to get to 1,000 true fans, you might need ten or 30,000 fans, period. Mm -hmm. So then the ones that are hardcore who keep coming back for you for more because they like your style, they like your energy, they like the way you teach, they like the funny voices that you bring out to the table. They like all of that. They relate to you. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. <laughs> you uh, missed your cue. Oh my God, Jonah set you up. <laughs> you weren't ready. Okay, we'll come back to that later. No, no, don't, 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 don't spoil it now. We'll come back to that. You find when you want to filter in our special... Yes. <laughs> so what can you do to build 1,000 true fans? Now we, Matthew, we have 440,000 subs almost. So out of that, I think we have to have at least 1,000 true fans. And we know this because we are making a decent amount of money to try to build the future. Mm -hmm. So much so that we're going to leave behind the design services business, which we've been doing for the last 23 years, making things for other people as an agency, doing branding, motion graphics, music videos, doing those kinds of things, even consulting. And we're moving towards a product business where we're creating content and teaching people just like you. And when we launched the, the book, Pocket Full of Dough, which was, I think, to get the book, it's like $25. A lot of people gave us their money freely to support us. And it's like, finally, there's something out there that I can do to give back to you. That's how we know we have true fans. So we went to raise $25,000 and instead we got $75,000 to do a book, an old school, old fashioned ink and paper book. Can you believe that? I can because I backed it up as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm counting you as one true fan. Thank you for doing that. Where's my dinger? I can't find it right now. Okay. So that, that means that now, Robert, you're not going to want to show your demo reel. You're not going to want to show commercial projects unless you use it as a story component, which I think you can do. If you mm -hmm. go back in time, what's that project that you did? Uh, the Sapphire thing? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Let's travel back in time. Everybody that's listening to this right now, I want you to do this, okay? Close your eyes, think about the project that you did for a client, and try to remember the most emotional high or low point in that creation. 
right? Try to think about what's the lowest point emotionally and what was the highest point and see if a story or a lesson emerges from that. So Matthew, I know this is totally unprompted. This is unscripted. This is raw. This is raw. So Matthew, I want to put you on the spot. I want you to think about a project that you've done mm -hmm. without revealing the project or betraying anybody's trust mm -hmm. that you can share one story, an emotional high or low, and I will do the same. Anything that you've done. And then that way you can use the project to communicate a lesson. We don't want to see projects anymore. We want to learn from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Matthew, is that enough time for you? I'm uh, still thinking, still processing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, emotional high, and I, I can share okay. the clients high or because low. It's, yes. it still paints them in a good picture. Okay. Uh, there, it was the uh, music video we did for Coldplay. Okay. Uh, I was, nothing I was big. About to say, talk about Ink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Perfect. a little project for a small unknown band, Coldplay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So uh, Look at Matthew name dropping now. Uh, yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to get those views. Um, yeah. So uh, we were working on the project for maybe four or five weeks and we had an animatic half-baked uh, version of the animation and the clients were coming in aka the band and they walked into the room to review it for the first time and I was nervous just because I love this band growing up I still love them uh, they've been so influential uh, for me so to meet Chris Martin and all these people was there was a lot of pressure in the room and I was making something based off of their creative output, based off of their song, something that's already their baby. So, you know, I, I took that with great respect and tried to make something artful, something beautiful that uh, accompanied that. So in the room, uh, the entire band of Coldplay was there reviewing the work and I push play. I let them watch it and it was an interactive music video. So it's um, an excess of three minutes and about 30 seconds in, Chris Martin says, stop. I've seen enough. And I was thinking, oh crap, this is it. <laughs> I need dramatic it, music. <laughs> it is over. Like, I, we have to start over. They're going to kill the project. They're going to walk away. And he said, I love it. It's like, when is it going to get done? And I was like, oh, snap. Okay, that's it. Well, let, let's stop right there. And then I remember uh, another person in the room's like, no, no, let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. Let's, let's keep watching that thing. And we're all looking at him. It's like, no, no, we don't want to play it. He said, it's done. We're, we're good. The, cl the client has basically approved this. They don't even need to see any more. But he was so insisting on pushing and, and playing because we had been working on it for so long. We uh, had so much pride in working on it, one of my team members. And then, you know, we eventually just stopped it. And then we, we just had a, a jolly good time. He just uh, Chris Martin just walked around the office. The band was just there. And, and we finished the project. And there was no changes from there. And I was halfway through the project and it was amazing. So it was this high. But the things that I learned was that if somebody says yes and they love the project, stop selling, stop pushing, just ease off and do your thing. Otherwise, if you keep playing, if they start seeing more of the things that are unfinished and you start validating or trying to describe what it is you still dream of doing, all of a sudden you're making the work that you're doing a little bit uh, more imperfect, a little bit uh, less attractive, and you're pointing out all the flaws that only you can see. So once they're in love with it, just stop selling. And that was a very powerful lesson for me to experience and learn uh, also for something that was very high pressure for me. Let me put the cherry on top of that. What Matthew is saying, just to totally summarize it, is do not, do not go past the sale. When somebody says yes, that's the best possible outcome. When you ask the girl out and she says yes, you don't keep trying to convince her why you're going to be a good date because eventually you're going to get a different reaction than the one you wanted. And so many of us build up in our mind like the presentation, what we're going to say, how we're going to counter objections that we're actually surprised when the client says yes. Matthew might have been prepping for a war. He might be prepping to explain all the unfinished parts. And so in his mind, he's like this locomotive engine, right? And he has to be able to stop on a dime. When the client says yes, you just be quiet and you move on. You just take care of the next order of business and that's it. So that's a lesson here. Okay, that's also another edit point for Jonah and team to probably cut together ink while Matthew's telling the story. Okay, I want to acknowledge and and say thank you to B Motion Design for doing the super chat function with us. He doesn't even have a question. He or she doesn't have a question. Just just doing a super chat. Really appreciate you, buddy. Okay, yeah. Robert, what's your story around a project that you've done, good or bad, that you can pull out a lesson from that? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, let's 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 stick with a with a Jenner Arts um, 
project or the so-called Boris effects now, uh, the, yes. the, the Sapphire Ardens uh, thing. Uh, I mean, I have many stories, but this one, because we talked about that, I was like kind of thinking, okay, what can, what can I say about that one? So for that one, um, I was approached uh, by them um, asking like, hey, do you want to do a little ident, a little trailer we can play at our booth at NAB? And uh, I said, yeah, of course. What do you need? Like, well, it's totally up to you. Just do whatever you want, completely open brief, which is fantastic as a creative. That's what you want to hear. And um, the, the catch is that it has to be finished in four weeks because NAB is in four weeks. And I was like, oh, gosh, okay. I mean, I was booked. Um, I had maybe in, within those four weeks, I had a window of maybe one week um, to work on that. And I knew that I, I will not be able to pull it off alone. So um, I brought on um, three of my, my buddies, um, Akira, Saad, and Kais, and asked them, hey, guys, do you want to work on that project with me? You know, this could be very interesting. And I said, yeah, of course, open brief, love it. We all booked. Um, so everyone only had essentially between three and eight days of time available. So I thought, why don't, why don't you use this? I mean, that was a little like a real low because we're like, okay, we're not going to be able to, to get this project off. We have to, to let it go. And I didn't want to. So how can, we, how, can we, how can we fix this? How can four individuals work independently on something that is one piece? So I had this idea or we developed this idea of um, what you call it when you, when you have a piece of paper you draw it and you fold it. So you want to see like the two lines and the next person has to draw the next one. And oh, exquisite corpse. Exquisite corpse. Exactly. Exquisite corpse. Yes. Yeah. So that was the idea to do an exquisite corpse animation. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to everyone starts and ends with the, the Sapphire logo, which is just an, just an A. Um, and, um, and that, that's, that's your start and your end point. And in between anyone can do whatever he, he or she wants. Um, like or actually he in that case <laughs> because it was four, four guys but um it was like completely up to you whatever you want to do you just have to use the plugins in one way or another um so we didn't know or i didn't know taking on the project i didn't know what will come out after four weeks so everyone worked independently with the first and the last frame doing stuff in between and we used the, the last frame always as a connection point to, to the next episode so to say and um, the the real high came when um, actually there was two highs because I want I was so fed up with three D animation I wanted to do two two D animation that's why I did completely just two D layers and After Effects mostly using the Sapphire stuff um, but the second high was when connecting all the four clips together and making it a, a beautiful thing although every clip looked different it still kind of felt um, like uh, homogenic. Like it's like one, one piece. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was very happy about that because we, we kind of pulled it off to work with four people independently within the time client loved it. So yeah, it was something everyone, everyone tried out the new technique a new a new tool, a new plugin, a new workflow, um, and, and created just some, some pretty pixels. Great. So people are asking, can we see this? Can we see this? And before I show you what this is, I have to turn on the volume in case the music's not cleared. Is it cleared? Clear. We're good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no. It's, is is yeah. it no? Is, is it, it, li it licensed music or no, Robert? No, no. It was it was it was made for that piece especially. Okay, should I turn the volume on, Jonah? Let me. Or it won't work. It's okay. Don't worry. You know we can just talk about it. Well, the, here's the interesting thing, and this is totally unplanned. So Robert describes the Gen Art Sapphire logo as just just an A or just a triangle. Do you know what company designed just that triangle, Robert? I know, I know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Well, this is just a I, pixel moving, uh, just a triangle. <laughs> Squeeze me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, know, I know because I was talking to Brian Fox, and uh, he he said, um, actually, I was talking to Brian Fox about you. Yeah, um, asking like uh, I don't know how we how we got to that, but I don't know. I said like, do you know Chris Doe? Um, he he must be like an amazing guy. Um, I'd like to meet him. Maybe you can introduce us. That's what I ta said to Brian. He said, yeah, yeah, I know him. He designed the logo for us. And I'm like, oh, cool. So maybe, I don't know, the next time I see you wherever in the world, uh, maybe maybe you can introduce me to him. And then uh, next thing you know, I'm in LA and I bump into you. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird world this is. Isn't it a weird world, guys? Wow. Okay, what a quinky dink, as uh, my son would say. Okay, I'm going to hit play here. Jonah, should we just hit play or no? Go for it. With the sound or no? 
Uh, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. it. Let's live dangerously. Here we go, guys. I hope we don't get sued. There goes my logo. Just broke it. I don't think we're getting levels from it. We're not getting levels. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's all right. We could just it's talk okay. over it. So, is this somebody else's animation beginning now? Yeah, that's my part. Okay. It's all essentially 2D. After Effects icons, uh, you know, being morphed into each other. And, mm -hmm. and that's, again, that's uh, Saad's work now. Mm hmm all Cinema 4D, he wanted to do something with, I think, was it X Particles? I'm not even sure. And that's Kai's, Kai's design. The first one was Akira's, by the way. I see. So everything comes together. And I said, Kai, so what did you think about doing this, this boss that explode out? And he's like, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to play with an emitter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> A lot of concept goes in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the the moral of the story, the lesson to learn from what you shared with us is this. And I want to tell you guys, those of you guys that want to become better storytellers, as I used to teach this at Art Center, the art of storytelling is story delaying. You want to pose a problem and not to give them the answer. So what you need to do is you need to bring the conflict up front. So here's Robert gets an assignment, four weeks, he knows who needs to work on it. The problem is they're all booked and they're all available at different times. And that's an unusual thing for a project because you want to work on it all together at the same time. So he devises something, I guess, the what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. He knew he mm -hmm. wanted to work with, he knew kind of what he wanted to do, but because the circumstances didn't allow him to do that, he had to invent something where they could all work on it independently on their own time, but yet still somehow feel like a cohesive whole. Thus was born the exquisite corpse and the piece that you're seeing with this, just another A logo. <laughs> that's it. Okay. So that's what you want to do, Robert. So when you go and look at your old work, think about the story and tell that story. Mm -hmm. And then you can just play the piece. And it's really not about, well, then I opened up Bad for Facts and then I did an easy ease keyframe. Because there mm -hmm. are a lot of people who do that right now and it's getting more crowded every single day. Unless you're this mm -hmm. wild, outrageous personality like Zimri, when you're like, <laughs> okay, well, awesome possum. And if that's what you do, then people will tune in just to watch you be a goofball. But I just don't see you like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a really genuine, soft-spoken guy. And I think that resonates with people. So tell your stories, uh, use the word. I'm, Go ahead. I'm not soft-spoken by precious after effects. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, the there special is. guest. Rapes. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. He is not self-taught, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we didn't scare all the children away. You guys, you guys can come back out. <laughs> no. What'd you guys think of the golem there? We let him out for a little bit. Just do Cinema 4D tutorials in golem. Yes, yeah, you could do that. Awesome. <laughs> he will lose his voice. Yeah. I don't know how Andy Serkis does that for the whole thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Awesome. Okay. People are saying that's really beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Gollum <laughs> impression. Yes, for the win. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's your question number two? My uh, precious. From my end? Uh, yes. What was that? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the, the, the whole Instagram game. Uh, how to how to play that. You know, how to... Oh, okay. We didn't like, even answer your question. <laughs> huh? <laughs> we didn't even answer your question. How to play the Instagram game? Well, I mean... That I, you know what, I don't get the whole stories thing. You know, I, I kind of understand that. That, I mean, don't laugh at me, but I mean, I know like you I'm post beautiful pictures and so yeah. on, and it's all good, and you have like the little backstory and the caption and the hashtags. But this whole stories thing, I mean, I understand that it's kind of like the day to day thing that you do, like the behind the scenes thing. But, like, you know, <laughs> what is it up with stories? <laughs> okay, like, I'm not an Instagram pro myself and i barely know how to use it the first you post so much well, i know actually, i know yeah. i know because i have young people here the youngins <laughs> you know they come out there chris you old fart let me show you how to do this thing why aren't you using this feature i'm like oh my god when did they put that button oh you know version two i'm like oh okay so See? i'm i'm a noob i'm a new to instagram so i'm going to share with you some of the things i've learned about how to use instagram you can think of your feed which is your curated timeline as mm -hmm. a photo album, a book that you're publishing, and you want to be very careful about the images that you put in there so they either tell a consistent story and they're designed or photographed or color corrected in a consistent way. 
Because again, mm -hmm. just like your YouTube channel, when I when I hit it and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that's really horrible. I'm not following this guy. I'm out. Mm -hmm. However, I think the Instagram stories is more like the raw, unprocessed film that doesn't make it into the book. So it's a mm -hmm. nice combination of really curated, beautiful images and spontaneous behind the scenes, really authentic versions of you. So I'm not going to take a picture of my shoes and socks and post it on my Instagram feed because that's really not what I want to be about. However, in my stories, I can do that and I can write a little bit of something there if I wanted to. So they're quick, they're disposable, they disappear and you don't have to worry about it. They're, they're kind of impermanent and there's something really cool about that. Recently, I did two Instagram stories live and people were really kind of just excited to be talking to me and I couldn't figure out why. And then I reached out and I talked to somebody and they told me why. They said that when you appear on Instagram stories, you get an alert notification that this person is on right now and they know it's going to disappear. So we're bringing back that old kind of ephemeral, the, this is here and then it's gone, it's going to disappear, vibe back. And I think that's what Instagram stories is really good for. Quick, mm -hmm. disposable ideas that you can try out. It's also a good way to communicate with your friends, fans, fans and audience in that mm -hmm. I also repost and share lots of things that people share with me uh, just mm -hmm. because like, I see you. I see you. When you hit me up on Instagram, I respond to you and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing it. So that's a nice thing too. They feel like, hey, in a way I can reach out and I can talk to you. And that's nice. So okay. it's more conversation. Does that make sense? Point. Does so make sense. Go and snap does some pics. Mm -hmm. Does it have some relevance in terms of algorithm? Like, because you, you can't, well, I mean, technically you can like a story, but it's not like, because it's gone. I mean, is it, is it relevant, for example, to building a followership? That's a very good question. I do not know, but I'll tell you something. I have not updated my Instagram feed for months. But I upgrade, update my Instagram stories quite often, and I'm almost at 60,000 followers on Instagram, not having updated or uploaded anything. So in a way, it alleviates some of my own stress and pressure. And I think this is pretty genius about Facebook developing this, right? Trying to get that perfectly curated image and telling a story on Instagram is a lot of stress and pressure for me, especially because I got a lot of things that I'm doing. However, I feel like I want to interact. So now I can't interact because it's got to be just right. So this is a nice middle ground that they've created just for us so that we can feel like we're, we're being topical. We can share things. We can be in the moment. We can, you know, let our hair down for those of us that have it. And we can just go for it and we can be real and we can peel back the, that glossy veneer and really connect with people. I think that's mm -hmm. the nice middle ground. And I do not know how it impacts the algorithm, but I know this, if I don't keep posting, People are going to feel like this is a dead account. There's no reason to check in anymore. Mm -hmm. So that when they actually do have something to say, they're going to see it in their timeline. And you do need to know that. Basically, all the algorithms are working in a very similar fashion now, where if you follow somebody, but if you don't interact with them for a while, like on YouTube, they'll stop feeding that to you. Mm -hmm. So you may subscribe to 100 channels, but only really watch 10. YouTube is very smart. They're only going to start to serve you those 10 unless you start clicking on the other things. So it's important for me to not to be, uh, or for people to feel that the account is being abandoned. It's not. I just have so many other things I'm juggling right now. Okay? So okay. somebody with a lot of Instagram experience, maybe they can tell me, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and yes, I don't. So <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you much. All right? No, it's fair enough. It helps already. Yeah. So that's that's what I would do. And it, it just it's very liberating. You don't have to be perfect all the time. I know it's hard yeah, for me, but true. you know, I try. <laughs> okay, let's let's go with number question number two. Uh, three. Three. Okay, what's question number three? <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. What does that mean? Well, talk to me. Therapy. Is it? Is it? Is it the way around? No, it should be right, right? Yeah. yeah. I well, it. it means um, like like I sent you my. My new logo. Um, yes. Do you have, do you have, have the it. files? Yeah, let me pull just, it up. Well, I have the finished file. Let me... Uh, where's my keynote? I'm panicking here. Okay, here we go. And hit play. This is your new logo. Yeah. Okay, internets. Let them have it. What do you guys think of Robert <laughs> Renitsky's I mean, it's, design? It's, it's, it's for sure not the reinvention of the wheel. And, and that was, I didn't set out to do that. I, I, I wanted to have something that I feel comfortable with. Yes. And I will share some of the drafts um, on Instagram, actually, and maybe as stories. I suppose, there you go. I don't know. So um, what, what's your Instagram handle again? Uh, HR Animator. 
So at HR Animator, you guys can go check him out right now. He has a little over 600 followers. Let's see if we can do something about that. I think this is actually a really nice, modern, classic-looking logo. I was struggling with this logo. I'm going to be honest. Let's stay on this for a little bit, Jonah. I was struggling with this because your name is Robert Renitsky, but it's mm -hmm. with an H. So I forgot that the H is silent. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where's the freaking H in this logo? <laughs> I don't freaking... It's not Robert, but... It's kind of interesting because now I'm I I can remember then every time I see you if we don't talk for months I can remember oh the R the Renitsky I get it now I will remember so this is all it needs to be a logo needs to be uh, simple it needs to be appropriate it needs to be memorable and distinctive and it needs to be something that you could probably recall pretty easily so mm -hmm. I I know this logo and did I like you see the, go ahead did you see the H I saw the H in the grid I just didn't see it. In the execution, because mm -hmm. well, it's in the fine. negative shape, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't really see it, so it's yeah. it's not enough. It's like a two sides of a three sided leg or something. I don't know. A table. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I think it's a really it's nice mark. I would wear that on a cap. Hint, hint. I'd wear that on a cap <laughs> or on a t shirt. That's how you know you have a nice mark. Yep. I. Uh, That's I it. have that in mind. <laughs> you do. Okay. But the cap didn't I, arrive in time. <laughs> what I'm struggling with, and, yeah. and when you wrote me back um, on email, I was really laughing because it exactly, um, it was exactly mimicking what I what I felt. So Chris wrote back, "I like your logo. I'm not sure if the type really belongs there." You wrote something like, "It, mm -hmm. it feels like uh, the type is being uh, wants to join the party but wasn't invited." Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what what happened? Yeah, show him. Show, hold that closer to the camera. Okay, you guys see that right there? So Robert's like got the logo, his word mark at the bottom, and I my comment back to him was like, it wants to join the party. The R is like the party, ooh, ooh. and then they're like, hey, hey, we're cool too. And like, no, you're not. You don't get to join this party. So, so I don't think you need it. Why do you need you don't it? Don't think so. No, I don't I think don't know. so. I mean, like to describe what what it is, but you know, that's that's why I kind of left it, and um, I have like two versions: one with the bolt. Uh, Robert and one with the boat, Ranitsky. Yeah. But um, um, other than that, I, I kind of I stopped developing it because I didn't know where to put the type, make it bigger or smaller. Because I thought the, the shape is is strong. So if you make the type bigger, um, the shape the becomes smaller. Yeah. Smaller. Yeah. Exactly. So um, it was really difficult and put it to the side. No. Yes. Um, just Robert. No. Uh, you know what know. you can it's, be? Um, you could mm -hmm. just be like the artist formerly known as Prince. You could just be a symbol, <laughs> man. Starbucks <laughs> remove their type. Everybody's removing their type. They don't need it anymore because the symbol is so right. strong. And if your symbol is so strong, over time, people will recognize it and they'll recognize you. You don't need it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Question answered. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> that was the easiest logo therapy I've ever had to do, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quick that down. Why couldn't yeah. they all be like that? <laughs> Two minutes. Well, when they show up ready, then that's the way it is. No. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, I'll say this too, guys. Let's just be honest here. We generally don't pick logos to critique that are already really, really, really good. There's nothing else to do with it. So we want to pick something because there's something to play around with. So mm -hmm. if Robert, if we didn't know Robert and he submitted that logo as part of logo critique, I'd look at him like, yeah, it's just really, what am I going to do? I just delete the type at the bottom and call it the day. That's it. <laughs> it's done. I'm like done. There's nothing to learn from yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Move on. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, we we probably need to wrap up pretty soon. Maybe another ten minutes. Maybe we can talk to the people that are watching this right now. Matthew, is there any? They're just like mostly talking to themselves right now, right? Or amongst themselves. Yeah. Well, once you uh, once you yes. <laughs> told them to go at it on the logo, like that, all they are all conveying their opinion in the comments. Now. Oh, they're, are they doing that now? So they're just going crazy. Um, I'm trying to go back. So if you guys have any questions for Robert. Uh, definitely bring it up right now. Yeah, questions for Robert. Questions about how you can get started on this, getting on the passive income train with us because it's it's a glorious thing. Even if you do it just kind of as a hobby to figure it out, you don't need to fully commit to it just this second. I'm not telling anybody to do that, to quit the business, lose the job, fire the client. I'm not saying that at all. No, no, no. It's also risky to do that. You know, it would yes, be it stupid. Is. But uh, w what I really liked, like in, in the summary was, uh, or to sum it up, was like this, like this joy that that it brought back to to creating you know because creating the logo or the website or or the intro or anything was like oh man this is fun because you know i i want to do it no one tells you to do it but i want to do it you know yeah I think it's a beautiful thing and once you taste it as many people are tasting it ron segal melinda 
they're like, oh, this is kind of nice. You just get to do whatever and be anywhere. I, I, you know, just to connect our this story a little bit from the beginning of our live stream together, you had said that you just woke up one day and realized, why do I work like I have a full-time job when I'm an independent business owner? I can start work whenever I want. I don't even have to show up to work. I can work from the beach. I can work from the coffee shop. Are there beaches in Berlin or Germany? No, they're, you're landlocked, uh, right? Well, up, up in the north. Up in the north. Okay. So, yeah. like, you but, could just be anywhere and do anything and take on as many clients as you want or take on as few clients as you want. And you just need to remind yourself from time to time that you are the boss of you. And when you're doing these passive income business model, it's pretty awesome because really you don't serve a client anymore. You serve an audience. And that's a wonderful thing. I wish it for everybody that wants it. Okay. Now, Matthew, have they had an opportunity to write a question? Yeah, I mean, these are for um, Robert. Not all of them are on topic necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm afraid to get off track. Well, there's no track. Yeah. If it's a good question, it, it can work. Or are you afraid to ask it? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, somebody was asking, I think it was, uh, uh, let's say it was Derek. He's, Robert, this is for you, Robert. Since you don't have a large social presence, has that ever created a, a question of legit legitimacy with your clients? That's a really good question. That's a great question. All right, That's cameras on. Cameras on, Robert. Robert, you have the floor. To be honest, no. What, no. what do you think uh, that is? Because I mean, I, I started doing this stuff before there was social media. Um, I, I started design. You know, I, I just have a very traditional background in, yeah. in drawing and painting and, and typography and everything. So. The way, the way I developed my clients was uh, word of mouth. I never really invested in any advertising or anything. Um, it was just like people seeing my work and saying like, oh, he can do this. Hey, can you do that as well? Oh, yeah, cool. Hey, he, want, he has that. I want a trailer too. So it, it kind of got into that, but also with my, with my whole connection of, of freelancing for, for companies like Adobe and Wacom and Apple and so on, um, I got into this industry of uh, creating like this niche of creating trailers for, for this industry and animations. And, uh, and that grew uh, obviously out of this niche um, to do other stuff as well, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Um, but uh, to be honest, I've, I've, you know, never, no one like wondered like, Hey, is this guy really legitimate or um, right. no, if, well, if I would have started now, it probably would be different. I can imagine. Yes. Well, I want to ask you a question here because you said when they saw your work, how do they see your work? Well, on the website. I mean, I had I had a website for forever. Um, I mean, I started out with web design, and that's what brought me to animation. Back with Flash, that was my the, my first tool I used to animate. Flash, <laughs> and then Live Motion. Anyone knows right, Live Motion? Not Live Motion. Sure? I don't. No. no. Um, live Motion was like the Flash killer from Adobe back then, mm. before before the merger with Mercury Media. So that was my first connection with keyframes and then uh, followed by After Effects because I, I realized like hey, anything that animates moves and, and, and has sound to it is like amazing, more amazing than the still. And this is how I got onto, onto animation. And then um, since having the web design background, I always had a website and, um, and this helped me a lot, um, sending out links, like check out my work. So um, if, if you would consider my website as a social presence, then yes, I was there, but it wasn't social. It was just a website. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I have another question um, that's off topic of that. Okay. Um, shoot, no, I just. Oh, I uh, uh, David was asking. Dave, Dave Co. He's asking. What's up, David? Now that you have started on this journey of building a secondary business, a passive income business, how do you find time to balance between that, your family, and your creative service business? That's a good question. Um, luckily, for the last seven, seven, eight weeks or so, um, like I said in our first conversation, I wanted to take some time off. So I took, took it easy during Christmas and December, as well as January. Um, so I have very few um, projects going on right now, just minor, like smaller projects that I can fit in here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this allowed me to work on the, uh, on the passive income thing, on the concepts of a few tutorials, edit the tutorials down, do the logo, do the website, do all these things. Um, and the good, the good thing was I could freely manage my, my time with, with these things because there was no client. Um, so I could say, uh, you know what, 
uh, like yesterday, I was skiing with my son um, and then went to the studio at five o'clock and worked until 10. That's awesome. So, um, so that, was, that was nice. I mean, it was a little bit stressful in terms of like, hey, you don't want to hang out in the office so late. But then at the, on the other hand, I had a wonderful day in the snow. That's awesome. So, I, I really enjoy that because this is, for me, this was what's, what's all about to be your own boss, being self-employed, being able to say, you know what, it's snowing outside, it's beautiful, let's go out. I know that once the next bigger project comes up um, that has a tight deadline that needs four or five weeks of creative work done, um, things going to slow down on, on my own brand business you know if you want to say so mm -hmm. um so i i need i need to slot in time but for now for the last two months basically i was lucky that um i eased out on a little of, uh, on the project side so mm -hmm. um, I, I need to see how i find balance um it's gonna be it's gonna be a process for sure and it's gonna be challenging but yes. um Maybe you have to watch even less Netflix then. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just recap something that you just said right there. When you have client work, it pays the bills, but then you have no free time. When they, when you have no clients, you have a lot of free time. You can spend time with your family, with your kids and your, and your, your girlfriend and, and, or do personal things. The problem is you do that too long, then you have no business and you do the business part too long. Guess what? You have no family. Your, your girlfriend's going to leave you and the kids will be estranged. And they're like, who was, who's dad? I don't even know my dad. The key is to figure out how to ease in between those two. Mm -hmm. And the secret, the secret, my precious, <laughs> is passive income. Mm -hmm. Because you get to spend time with your family while making money. And it's the one few times in your life where you make money while you're sleeping, eating, playing, skiing, snowboarding, whatever it is that you do. Mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing and it could just be enough so that you have a good chunk maybe 60 to 70 percent of your income comes from working with clients and then 30 to 40 percent comes from passive income and if you can find yourself those 1,000 true fans and build a business around that and I'll, I'm gonna do a talk on this more later not, not this point in time how to do that so then all of a sudden it's like you make more money and you work less hours and you have a higher quality of life and you still get to stay sharp working with real clients and working on projects that you just love no more mm -hmm. like being beholden to the client just because they call and you need the money. I want to answer two questions really quickly. One is from Carlos. Carlos is like, I'm Spanish. Should I make my content in English? And the answer is absolutely yes, because it's an international audience. Why limit your audience to Spanish speaking people? You could do it bilingual if you wish. That's a lot of extra work, but I would just work hard on making it in English because that is the international language. Okay. It's not just because I speak it. Fred Brown. Ask this question, what do you think the best social media is to get clients and what's the best social media to meet new designers and collaborate? Okay, the best social media to get clients, it depends on who you are and what you're doing. I was speaking to Vincent Daniel, somebody I'm consulting right now, and he's on a platform that is just for gamers and concept artists. Matthew, did you know about this platform? What is it called? I'm spacing right now. And I can find him in a second, okay? I'll, I'll tell you what it is. But so you need to kind of figure out where your audience or your client is. So if you're in the graphic design space, if you do logo design, branding, packaging, I think your best bet is on Behance and Dribble. Get your work up there. And if you're maybe into the fashion space, probably Pinterest. And so that get your work out there because people have a much buyer higher like well, I'm sorry a much higher buying mindset when they're on Pinterest because they're actively shopping for things there. Mm -hmm. And if you're and it really depends on what, what your strengths are. I, I think because Robert and and our backgrounds are very similar, Matthew, in that we make video, we know how to tell stories with motion using graphics, and we have the cameras. We we know how to edit things together. YouTube is a great place for us. Mm -hmm. So it depends. But I think also the thing is, if you keep thinking, I'm going to make content to attract clients, you are probably seeing it on the sh like a short-term goal versus the long-term goal. Mm -hmm. It's really about building audience. Think about how, what platform do I need to be on to build 1,000 true fans? Let's rephrase that question. You have some thoughts on that while I tell you what this person's website should be? Or yeah, so the just kind of finishing off on that idea is like where do you put your content so that potential clients might find you i, I could only speak on our behalf and our on our history and what we've done our calling cards over the years were really big projects that we've done these were marketing uh kind of like marketing efforts that we looked at so pretty much throughout the history of blind our service company uh, our calling cards became all of the music videos that we've done 
So uh, back in 2006, six seven, it was crazy for Gnarls Barkley. It was this watercolor thing. Mm-hmm. And since then, I think there was probably at least 10 jobs that yeah. w- came as a result of that one project. Uh, then there was a music video for Justin Timberlake, uh, Love Stoned. Uh, I'm not really sure what that generated after that. There was probably a couple of uh, spots that came from that. Yep. So, but all of these we know that we're not necessarily going to make money, but because there's visibility and there's, uh, it's for a very visible client, we're just leveraging their audience uh, by making high-level work for them. So uh, on, the, on the business side, on, on the client service side, that w- has been very helpful uh, to attract potential clients there. Uh, for, for me personally, uh, I've had some success just posting my stuff on Instagram and Twitter. And I won't necessarily say that these are clients, but clients and what I'm looking for. So for me personally, I'm looking for speaking engagements. I'm mm. looking for, for areas in which I could go out and uh, continue to grow my, my public uh, personal brand. Um, so I'm constantly putting out posts there on Instagram and Twitter, sharing my insights and my stories on there. And that's how I got to go speak at, um, not NAB, what's the other one? Uh, well, you did speak at NAB with me. Yeah. Um, but the one. Grab- SIGGRAPH, yeah, at yes. SIGGRAPH, sorry, at SIGGRAPH, because I posted something on Twitter there, I, I tagged Cinema 4D, and then the community ma- uh, manager, uh, M- Matthias, he reached out to me and it's like, hey, do you ever think about speaking? And I said, yes, I want to speak. And then, so that's how that happened, and that was just me putting my stuff out there, being transparent, and sharing my process. So um, those are just a couple of examples from uh, experience that uh, I can share with you guys. Uh, I don't know... There's plenty of other examples, I'm sure, of, of other people who's utilizing social media to gain clients. But we have different goals nowadays than we did 10 years ago. Yes. Now, I want to show you guys the website I'm talking about. It's called ArtStation, and it's for artists, for recruiters, and for fans, and it's really game-based. So if you want to see a lot of game concept art, character design, background paintings, map paintings, all these kinds of things, this is the place that you go to. So now we're starting to get super hyper-specialized so that I, I can see more platforms like this existing as we go on in time. So Behance will probably have to splinter off into lots of different things. There's a site just for people who do logo designs, a site just for people who do amazing packaging, and that's where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. What you need to do is this. Also in the book Rework, they were talking about this idea about how to market. And marketing is you going to try to get exposure and all of us want the big platforms, the mass media companies, the Wall Street Journal, the Wired Magazine, Fast Company, to share our work, right? Mm-hmm. But those people have so many gates. The gatekeepers are very vigilant in protecting all this information from coming in because everybody wants to storm the castle. So they said, forget mass media, focus on niche media, focus on industry publications, online or offline, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then what happens is the journalists from the big mass media companies look to find fresh content. So they use the niche media companies to filter through and the stories that bubble up through the niche media, they pick it up. And that's how they were able to get mainstream coverage without having to even speak to those people directly. Mm-hmm. So think about that. Matthew had a very clear goal. He wanted he wants to ex, to gain exposure for who he is, to develop his public speaking chops, and to build his personal brand. So he's posting on Instagram things that he thinks will attract that kind of person. But that's his audience, and that's who he's trying to, to get. Mm-hmm. And it's been very successful because Matthew will be speaking more, especially as he's on the channel more. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, I think to clarify what Chris is saying is that if we're looking at examples for this, if you look at Niche media is probably things that are hardcore blogs that are focused on one tiny thing. Our example would be Motionographer. Motionographer is a blog that's focused on animation, visual effects, and the motion industry as a whole. So maybe a bigger um, a multi- a bigger media company might l- be scouring that because it's already curated and seeing what's interesting coming from that niche blog, and then it would get pushed up to uh, one of the bigger mainstream blogs. I wanted to also speak to that because uh, when we did the Coldplay video, I w- my personal goal was to get that on one of these big media uh, coverage blogs, right? So I was trying to reach out to all these different places, and I wanted to get it into Wired or Wall mm-hmm. Street Journal or something like that. And what I ended up doing is I was just scouring Twitter 
And I was looking for all the editors and writers that wrote at all of these different magazines. And I, I was looking on uh, LinkedIn, found a couple of emails, and I started just trying to give them the exclusive of the story before it got out. I got a few leads, and eventually I got uh, an article that I wrote, uh, published through another writer, uh, for Fast Company. Just because I was knocking on a bunch of doors, just like how Robert does in real life, where he's knocking on a bunch of doors, meeting people in real life. I was trying to do the same thing online because I wanted that coverage. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. So I gave them a feature. I gave them something valuable, something that they didn't have prior. So I just wanted That's to a clever a way story. of doing it. Matthew's yeah. persistent like that. I like that about him again. Like once he catches the scent, he just keeps going. <laughs> and speaking of which, Matthew, I think we can talk about this a little bit. Give mm -hmm. me the signal that go like this if you don't want me to talk about it. We're getting ready to wrap up Young Gun Season 1. And I asked mm -hmm. Matthew, like, hey, it'd be great if we got camera equipment, mics, and things to help Young Gun Season 2 up their production game. And it's a bunch of women. And they're all over the world. What can we do? So Matthew, along with Mark, they were like figuring out who we can reach out to. And do you want to tell them who we reached out to and how it turned out, Matthew? Uh, or is it premature? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say we got a camera company to... to we got somebody. We got somebody just because uh, Mark had met somebody in person. I think it was at Adobe Max. We followed yep. up later. We were knocking on their doors. We presented uh, an option for them of some content that we're making. And things lined up with all of their marketing goals. So because we had something of value, it lined up with what they were looking to do marketing-wise. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to close the deal and do something together. So okay. that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Good. Now, before I do the recap, before I do the recap, before I do the recap, I have one last question for Robert and really fast answer, Robert. Do you see yourself giving up on client work to focus on products, Robert? In the far future, yes. How many years? Three, maybe. Three years. Four. Four? Give us an answer. Three years. Three years. Okay. So it's 2019. So 2022. Woo. 2022 in February, Robert may have given up client work for product work, like where he's developing products. Okay. You guys mark it on your calendars. This is why we're going to get it. We got you on camera. <laughs> we have now archived it for all of eternity. Okay. Now, if you hit it really soon, you underestimate it. And if you never hit it, well, that's okay too. Either way, it's I, fine. It's, it's just it's prediction. Okay because, you know, things are running fine. I mean, even if it's going to be in five or six or seven years, it's going to be fine. Um, but, you know, you have to get there at one point. You know, like, like you said, it's not just about inspiration and saying like, oh, yeah, this inspired me to do something. It's about taking action and, and start doing things. That's right. Action is key. Action is key. Okay. It's time for us to do the summary. Jonah, let's bring up the summary graphics. Here we go. Summary for the show. First of all, thank you everybody for tuning in. Here's what we got. Woo! Okay. When you're making videos for YouTube, make sure your search volume and search competition is in the right equation. Two tools that we use that we love is vidIQ and TubeBuddy. We get paid no dollars. We actually paid them. To mention this okay and what you're looking for is high volume search traffic and low competition the opposite you don't want where nobody's looking for it and there's a ton of competition <laughs> for things that nobody wants okay and in that way use that information to be more intentional with the content that you create by studying what people want and giving it to them there's two ways to do this you can make it yourself and just hope somebody watches it or you can look for things that people want to look for or the, the people are searching for and give them that thing and mm -hmm. deliver it really well do it better than everybody else Titles and thumbnails do matter, but there are more complex things at play, but that's a good place to start. And the question came up during the live stream today. How do people see your work? Look, you have to realize that every artist is a marketer. Some are better than others. And back in the day, there weren't so many designers, creatives, artists, 3D designers, whatever. So it was a lot easier to find people like Robert and ourselves and other companies. We didn't have to be good at the marketing game. But as you get better at marketing and your fame grows, this is an old Brian Collins quote here, don't mistake fame for mastery. Don't mistake fame, Jonah, don't mistake fame for mastery. <laughs> I was trying to find out like, where Eventually he gets it, eventually he'll get it. Okay, and if in case you're wanting, look, English for now is the international language. It may be Mandarin someday pretty soon. 
but for now it's English. And so if you want to reach the biggest audience possible, use English. Forget niche media, go for, I mean, I'm sorry, forget mass media, go for niche media. And if you're looking for some work, think about Behance Dribble. They're great platforms for logo branding, packaging, and illustration. And I just discovered this today. ArtStation is where you want to be for game-related content. That's it for us. If you guys want to get in touch with Schmeagel, Golem, <laughs> it's at Harancy. Renitsky, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just said Horansky. <laughs> it's like Renitsky.com. He's also at HR Animator on Instagram at HR Animation on Twitter. That's his brand new spanking logo. If you don't like it, tell him and spank him one for me. Okay. <laughs> that's it, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell. And I want to give a big shout out to everybody that supports us through the sustaining members and any other way that you do it. Thanks. Uh, this is a joke. What's the best nation? It's donation thanks very much everybody oh my god i can't tell you guys about this but we'll be back for this in the game of thrones you either win or you die a new design challenge is coming up that's it we're out of here <laughs> <laughs> that was a busted up ending as ever i put one together uh, let me play the music and just embarrass yeah. myself right now in humiliation <laughs>